How is everyone today? You alright? Excited? Alhamdulillah. Uh, brothers, I live in Crawley. I don't know if you've heard of this town called Crawley. Put your hands up if you've heard of Crawley. Okay, so we are on the map, mashallah. Okay. Usually when I say Crawley, they say what, not where. So I'm really happy that some of you know where it is. So we speak in a certain way over there. But because this is East London, I'm going to try and speak like you guys as much as possible, which is what my as again, all right? Is that how they speak around here in East London? Not really. Back in, that's see, I'm 46, so I'm showing my age, yeah? maybe back in the days, yeah? It's like, what's happening, Baba? You all right? Is that that kind of thing, yeah? That's why okay, mashallah. So I'll try and go to Cockney and then normal so that I can keep everyone happy, inshallah. Uh, so, brothers, I usually do an icebreaker, but uh, since we are in short in time, I won't do a long icebreaker, but I will ask for two people to put their hands up, just so we can break a bit of ice, you know, get to know each other and enjoy the uh, each other occasion a bit more. Um, so in, I, I want to, two people to answer a couple of questions. And I'll ask you to put your hand up in a minute, right? Um, the question is, or the questions are, your name, what do you do in life? And if you were to have some kind of superpower, special power, suddenly, what would it be and why? Name, what do you do? Superpower. Two people, put your hands up. Masha, straight at it. Was it Sabitun or Awalun? Yeah, let's go. You prepared for this before, didn't you? I like the tension, the build up, you know? Like. You, uh, you're not going to give us your name? Mashallah. What do you do, Yahya, in life? Tell her. Teleportation. Mashallah. Wow. Okay. I'm not going to go into reasons. Yeah, that's your first reason. Okay, let's have one more person that side of the room, inshallah. Yeah? So we can get everyone involved. Name, what do you do, and what superpower would you like to have? Come on, brothers, we're Muslims, we're not shy, we're strong, we're fearless. You know, if nobody puts their hand up, I'll have to pick on someone. And I usually like to pick on someone who's shy. Oh, here we go, bro. Nice and loudly, yeah? What do you do, Abdul? You play football, mashallah, striker, defense. Wing. Center wing. Center mid. Midfield. Center mid. Sorry, bro. I'm getting. See, I'm old. I'm getting old now. Yeah. And superpower. Is that something I should come back to? Yeah. Loud. To go to the past. The past. Deep, mashallah. Okay, excellent. Jazakallah khair. So, if we get time, maybe we can do some at the end, inshallah. So. Brothers and, of course, sisters, um, I want to start with a quick story. This is a story, this is a true story of a man who lived around a thousand years ago. Yeah? Some of you might have heard this story, but I think it's a very pertinent story, especially for the youth. Because this man, he had a change. He had a change story, mashallah. Uh, his name is Fudayl ibn Ayyad. Fudayl ibn Ayyad, right? Fudayl ibn Ayyad. And I say this with no disrespect, right? Before I get, you know, counseled, a stuff I only say. He was the roadman of his time. He was the roadman of his time, yeah? He was the gangster. He was the guy that A will look up to, the big G. He was literally someone who used to, you know, actually rob people of their livelihood. And so he operated in the Middle Eastern region and he used to he made people a nightmare. But the thing was, this guy, as you can see in the name, is Muslim. So he's not even a Muslim, he's a Muslim, and he was making other Muslims' lives in madness. He was going crazy, right? And, and you know, someone who's involved with highway robbery, someone who's a gangster, what, what kind of lifestyle do they have? Do they have lifestyle like tahajjud in the masjid and Quran, tadabur? No, you can imagine that this person, as well as robbing people, we're talking parties, music, dancing, women, alcohol, right? This is the kind of the lifestyle. This is something which the, the West... And the hip-hop scene and the MTV, they're always pushing that. So this guy, Hudayl, he had that lifestyle. He had his gang and he was, he was just earning his wealth for the wrong way. 
Now the thing is, what happened once, as you know, with all gangsters, they have a love story. You know, they have a love aspect. There's always a, there's always a love scene involved, right? He um, went to go and see his, this girl, this girl he wants to go and see. And he's going to the girl's house. He's climbing the roof back in the days because uh, there's no social media. They can't, there's no sliding to my DMs and can you meet me around the block? There's nothing of like that, right? This is a thousand years ago. He had to go to the upstairs floor, the whichever floor. But while he's climbing, while Fulayd for for is climbing to meet his beloved, he hears a recitation of the Quran. And someone's reciting on the other side, maybe in some of the block. And subhanAllah, what's the, um, the ayah? It's the ayah of Surah Hadith where Allah says, Has the time not yet come for the believer's hearts to be melted, to be humbled by the remembrance of Allah? That ayah, even though he heard it before, it, it hit him like a thunderbolt. It shook him. Now he's a Muslim. You know, subhanAllah, it's, it's, it's a moment of inspiration. So that got him thinking. He climbed down. He's, it's, it's the middle of the night. And he's thinking about what's just happened. The ayah, he's going to meet his girlfriend. He's should he change his lifestyle now? He's been making people misery. While he's doing that, he's in a rock somewhere in a mountain and he hears people, this is at night, on the other side of this rock, talking and conferring. And they're conferring amongst themselves. They say, look, what should we do? Should we stay here? It's night time now. Should we stay here? Or should we head home? Should we get out of here? And they ask, why, do you want it? why are you so rushed to get out of here? Because this is where Fodail operates. This is where my man operates. Where this is where you know he's going to come and take, take out our belongings. So we need to escape this ruthless man. Now, this again made for they think. Now, subhanAllah, you know, I'm a Muslim and there's other people and they are, they're fearing me. They, they hate me and they fear me. What kind of lifestyle am I living, subhanAllah, right? And so began the process of change. And this same Fudayl ibn Yad brothers. Have you heard of this name before, Fudayl? Fudayl? Put your hands up if you heard of the name Fudayl ibn Iyad. SubhanAllah, one brother. This man became, went on to become an amazing scholar of Islam. An amazing, and, uh, and I remember the first time I heard him many years ago, is because he comes out with a lot of wisdom, a lot of amazing quotes, subhanAllah. Quotes that really make you think. And, and imagine, look, this is, this is someone in their probably late 20s or 30s, or we're not sure. But let's assume 30. What's the, there's many lessons from this. But one of the biggest is, it's never too late to change. You know, sometimes some brothers think, you know, I'm 46, and some brothers, when I meet them, they're 30, 40. Bruv, you know what? There's no point, man. I've been sinning all my life. I've been doing this, that, the other. I've been doing zina. I've been doing drugs. I've been doing scams, whatever. And I'm not praying for sa. There's no point, bro. I'm 40. I'm going to die in 20 years' time. But subhanAllah, this story of Fudayl and many of the scholars, it shows you it's never too late. It's never too late to change. So I hope that story, some of you younger, remember the name, Fudayl ibn Iyad. Will you remember that name, inshallah? Yes? Inshallah. Now, I want to just want to go for a few points, and hopefully we can have some good question and Q&A, inshallah. And I'll probably repeat this, but when it comes to question, brothers, yeah, don't be shy. Don't be shy like a, like a new bride, yeah? Because when it comes to questions, I'm not here to judge you, yeah? And some of you are here with your parents. How many of you youngsters are here with your parents or uncles? Just put your hands up. Okay, I feel sorry for you because you can't ask those questions which is in your mind. Because I know every young... Okay, that's, that's fine. You're lucky. You know, some youth, they have questions. Yeah, so I'm, uh, if, if, if you have a question, but your dad's there think, oh God, if I ask this question about this gal, or about this feeling, or about this thought about Allah, my dad's going to kick them out of me. Yeah? If you have that, brothers, chat to me afterwards, inshallah, on the side, no problem. And dads, with all due respect, I'll ask you just, you know, mind your business. Because I know how it is. Youth have questions in their minds. Are we living in Darul Islam? Are we living in Medina and the times of Prophet No, we are living in the land of Kufar. We're living, living in a land where there's non-Muslim dawah taking place all the time. What do you mean by dawah? The music, freedom, do what you want, become the alphabet people, become what you want, become a tree, become a lamppost, become whatever. That's what they're pushing, right? That's their dawah in schools and colleges. But what are we doing there? What do, and so the, the youth, they've got questions, but they fear it. They fear that if I ask this question, my dad's going to smack me. And, you know, back in the days, in the 90s, if we had a question, and I'm, may Allah bless our Mulvi Saab, may Allah bless our Imams, but if I went to an Imam 20 years ago, 90s, uh, Imam Saab, does Allah really exist? Oh, this is your answer. You want to answer? Come here. We get slapped. Right? We get slapped. Right? Got beats. Yeah? Sometimes it works. But, you know, never ask that question again. 
But I know that youth have a lot of questions. So inshallah, we can you know, have some Q&A. Look, when I look around the room, I see amazing mu'mineen, mashallah. I see a lot of, I can feel a lot of nur, mashallah. Hang on, let me check. Actually, that brother there, no, no. Oh, good. Mashallah, all of you look amazing. There's nur. But do you know what? I was just out chatting with the young brother, Arfan. And I said, look, I engage in da'wah. In da'wah to non-Muslims, da'wah to Muslim youth. Wherever it's possible. Yeah? By the mercy of Allah. Now, the thing is, I know what East London is like. I live in Crawley, but I'm always in London. I know what the whole of West London is like. I know the whole of East London, North London, South London. It's usually the same story. The same story in Birmingham, Bradford, inner cities. And that is that the Muslim youth are going away or leaving Islam. Do you brothers disagree with that? There is, isn't it, as we call it, isn't it a peak situation? A lot of our Muslim youth are either bored of Islam or going away from Islam or tired of Islam or want to leave Islam. This is a, this unfortunate, is a unfortunate reality. I'm not saying here, mashallah, maybe you guys got a good system, alhamdulillah. But generally, it's a very, very uh, crazy situation. Yeah? So the point is, you guys are amazing, mashallah. But can you do me one little promise? Maybe you have a cousin or a friend or a family friend or a neighbor that's Muslim but involved in deep sins. Maybe you know someone, you've seen something on social media or heard something, your cousin, fala, uncle, son, fala, auntie's daughter, you may all know someone that's away from the deen, no salah, yeah, addicted to music and heroin and drugs and supplying drugs and gangs or whatever. Yeah, you might know someone, yeah, or might have doubts about Islam. If you guys know someone like that, will you take you know, the two, three points? Okay. Okay. Salaam alaikum, sisters. <laughs> I did say Islam to sisters earlier, mashallah. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay, good point. I, I realize the point now. So, brothers and the sisters who are listening, mashallah, uh, if you know, think about it, if you know someone who's away from the deen, will you pass just three or four points? I want to go through about six, seven points. Not too long. Yeah? Six, seven points. Hopefully these points will make you think, make me think, and if you pass on the message to others, it make them think. And inshallah, maybe one or two points which you pass on, by the mercy of Allah, might hit their heart. And something will change. Imagine if you passed on one little message, one point from me, that you got, we learned from today, right? And you can make notes if you want to. Or oh, I know everyone's good at Melton notes. You know, I'm, a, I'm an educator, I'm a Dao trainer. I always insist on notes. And whenever I say, brothers, you're making notes, they go, yeah, bro, look. So if you guys are all making mental notes, inshallah, remember one or two points, yeah? If you pass this on to that cousin, that friend, that neighbor, whatever, and if they change by the mercy of Allah, you get a, a, a share in the reward. Do you not want reward? Who doesn't want reward here? Put your hand up. There's always one person puts their hand up. Who doesn't want reward? It's a trick question. But it doesn't matter, mashallah. I'll, you don't want the reward? <laughs> you want to give it to someone else? Okay, mashallah. We'll chat afterwards. Interesting character, alhamdulillah. <laughs> mashallah, mubarak. Okay, so. When, look, I'm 46 now. You see this beard. And I'm sitting in the masjid. Give me a talk. May Allah accept it. Uh, inshallah, the, the, the heart is in the right place. But the thing is, I wasn't always like this. If you go back in time, one brother wants to go back in time, that Abdul, yeah? So if you, were to, if you were to go back in time, when I was 16, 17, I was a complete Egypt. I was an idiot. I was a fool. You know, where's, um, I think West Ham is not far, right? Down the road. Yeah? Irons. Come on, you irons. Anybody? No? Yeah, okay. Irons are there, you know, irons or, you know, hammers. So, um, they, are, they used to be known, as well as Millwall, as well as Chelsea, the firm, they, there was a lot of football hooliganism. I know there's a lot of brothers of mashallah kind of my age, they remember that, right? It's calmed down a bit now, they've relaxed up. But yeah, subhanAllah, you know, I, I'm, I'm from a Pakistani background, I've got brown skin. I was so deluded, I was so stupid, I was so, may Allah forgive me, that I, I wanted to join the firm. I wanted to join Millwall. Uh, not the football club, not play, I wanted to join their hooligans. So I can have a nice little scrap, you know, in the car park. Whatever. That's me, that was my vision, right? And subhanAllah, I even had a chat with my parents. May Allah forgive me. Abu, are you sure this is the right skin color? I'm sure it's white. I'm sure I'm white. Right? Astaghfirullah. That's how it's crazy, you know? And we used to have this word. I don't, it's, it's probably not PC now. We used to call coconut. Do you remember that word, brothers? You're such a coconut. Do you remember that? 
I don't know if you, <laughs> you know, brown on the outside, white on the outside. Bounty. Bounty. So, uh, but this is me. And I, you know, typical 17 year old, no salah, no relation with Allah, no connection. Does, and you know, Subhan, if someone asks me, you know, not, do you guys get asked by non Muslims, what is Islam? Does some, some non Muslim ask at school or college, what is Islam? Do you ever get asked that? Or brothers at uh, work, do you ever get asked that? What is Islam? Yeah? Tell me about Islam, what is Islam? Or is this Islam, right? If somebody used to ask me back then, what's Islam? Do you know what I used to say? I know that one, I know that one. Um, halal meat, halwa, Molvi Saab stick. Uh, the, they do this Juba on Fridays where I get a nice little kick for about half an hour, right? And, oh, can't have a girlfriend, can't drink alcohol, can't do this, and about 10 million other can'ts and don'ts. That's the song. That's the song. Q&A offers, bro, yeah? Q&A offers. Yeah, inshallah. <laughs> so that's for me. Now, brothers, is that Islam? Is Islam just a bunch of don'ts and, and not even, subhanAllah, we, you know, we, I realized after how beautiful, profound, amazing, this amazing way of life is, right? But, but that, back then I was stupid. I, didn't, I wasn't taught this, yeah? I reduced Islam to a few stupid uh, rules. But Islam has rules, beautiful rules to help us out, but it's much more than that, much bigger than that. So the thing is, when somebody gave me dawah, they said, they asked me a few questions, which is something which maybe some of you have gone through, even though you're Muslim, even though we're all Muslim, mashallah, it's a question that you might have thought of at a young age, which is, why do I exist? What's the purpose of this dunya? Uh, what's going to happen after I die? These are curious questions. Those who, who think about it, those who deliberate, deliberate more upon this, get the answers. But most, you know what? They think about a few seconds and just get lost in the dunya. Get on with your dunya. Yeah? So the thing is, alhamdulillah, I change. And mashallah, may Allah accept it. I got involved in dawah uh, before I even started praying. So yeah? that was really a jeep. So at the age of 17, started praying. And alhamdulillah, uh, dawah stall since then, may Allah accept it. A few years on and off. But that's, that's me in a nutshell, mashallah, right? Um, and when I realized, one of the things I realized earlier, which is I want to pass on to you, is what we need to do to change is a few things. Whether it's bad habits, whether it's deep sins, whether it's light sins, we've all got something, right? We've all got some bad habits, yeah? We've all got habits, we've got sins that are some are major, may Allah forgive us, and some are minor. So we want to change, we want to get rid of this. How? Why? So one of the things we need to do is we need to reflect upon our heart. The heart, that's where it starts. If the heart is in the right place, everything will be sorted, inshallah. Yeah? So I'm not saying you guys. Again, like I said, we established that you guys, mashallah, no, you're amazing. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Can I do a quick smile test? Everybody smile. Oh my God, really serious. I heard pastor was a good smiling face, man. All right, let's try again. Everybody give me their best smiles. I can see that today. All right, okay, alhamdulillah. That was a little thing just to wake you up, yeah? <laughs> when it comes to the heart, I know friends. I know not, I'm not about non-Muslims here. I know Muslim youth who they want to they wanna feel good. They want to feel good. They want to have peace of heart. They want to feel relaxed. And they think, it's a delusion, they think that the heart will be good when I chase after women. The heart, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna fill this heart with jobs. What do I mean by that? I'm not from my area and other areas, one of the things that every youth does is this, what I call jobs obsession. Now, there's nothing wrong with working. I'm not a, I'm not a sheikh here, I'm not giving a fuck what, there's nothing with jobs. But there's an obsession with jobs. I know many brothers, they got one job, they're earning mashallah. Now they've got some spare time, spare days, what should I do? Uh, I think I'll get a second job. You feel that, I've got more time, what should I do? I'll get a third job. Brothers, is, work, are we just, is that what it is? So they get job after job after job after job. Work after work after money, money, money. One account, two account, nationwide, Santander, HSBC, and, but, and I want some more. And now there's online, a monzo and this kind of thing, right? So th there's an obsession with money. There's nothing wrong with earning money, but there's an, there's, a, there's an issue with obsession with money. So they're trying to fill their heart. The heart, there's a void in there. There's a, there's a gap in there. And they're trying to fill it with money. One job, two job, hustle, side hustle. But it's, I mean, mashallah, a lot of young, youngsters, they do, they work hard. They graft, right? They graft. They work in retail, part-time, alhamdulillah, you know? 
uh, crazy bosses, mad bosses, they have to work, head down. But there's a lot of Muslims, a lot of youth who are doing those things which are, they should be doing. There's side hustle and then there's hustle. There's scams. You know, this is going to be a raw talk, but we all know brothers and sisters who are involved in some sort of scam. You know, subhanAllah. Lying, cheating the system, fraud. Why do we do this? Yeah, you're going to get the money. You're going to have the nice car for that. You're going to have the nice house, the nice yard. Refurbish your yard, right? Get your kitchen done. Home improvements. But I, we forget that we're going to be, we're going to be, but we should be forgetting that we're going to be asked about this on the day of judgment. SubhanAllah. Yeah? So what are youth doing? They're, 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 they're obsession with money. Are they the young brothers of chasing the girls or the girls are chasing the guys? Yeah? Back in the day, they used to be trying to you know, have dates in a park and this and that. Now it's what? Slide into my DM. What's your TikTok? What's your Instagram? What's your Facebook? You know, Facebook's a bit old now, yeah? But it's, and now, subhanAllah, people, are, all the youth, what they're trying to do? And, and subhanAllah, can I just say this also practicing Muslims as well? Because social media, it can be for good use, but there's a lot of fitna there as well. There's a lot of fitna. Do you understand what I mean by fitna? Yeah? A lot of craziness, a lot of madness. SubhanAllah, it is so easy to sin on social media now. Yeah? Shaitan has made it a playground. You, and you know, you can easily just see a female name and just go to DM. Hi, one friendship. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> I'm not You want friendship? Yeah? Or, you know, what's the other, what's the other fitna? But you got really, this brother really wants to ask a question. I think you, bro, you're really keen to ask something. Go, go for it. Mashallah, beautiful insight for the brother. Alhamdulillah. The rest of the insights after the talk. Alhamdulillah. We've got, we got a bit of agreement, mashallah. Um, so, not only is, is there flirting taking place on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook inbox, whichever inbox, every, have you noticed every you know, social media app has an inbox? So you can, you know, it's, that box is flirt box, that, flirt, that box is fitna box, right? So the, the, the non mahrams can chat to each other, and, and there's another fitna as well, which is, Asalaamu Alaikum sister, can I talk to you? I don't really, I only want to give you da'wah. I want to give you dawah. My heart is clean, sister. I just want to give you dawah. Next week, will you marry me? What, what happened to the dawah? You know? Or, you know what? Why are we chatting to each other on, in a little box on a character which is made by algorithms uh, by some nerds? Why don't we meet up? Why don't we link up? Let's link up. Let's link up at Costa or Starbucks or whatever. You know? So this, this is what the fitna does to you. Yeah? So, what, so what's my point? My point is youngsters are after this. And what's the other obsession now? Everybody wants to become a social media superstar. Social media is the, I, I tried to make it as a singer, it didn't work. I tried to make it as an actor, it didn't work. Bollywood didn't call me, Hollywood didn't call me. Do you know what? I want to become a superstar by TikTok dancing. That's the fitness, right? And you know, you, those of, I, I use TikTok, yeah? As Dao ideas, for the sake of Dao, inshallah, may Allah forgive me. <laughs> there. But the thing is, if those of you on TikTok, if you, when you're scrolling through, they're always sh showing human beings dancing like monkeys. That's their biggest thing. And you know, when you see it so much, yeah, you want to do it. Look, my man did a silly dance, and he got 10,000 likes. Next man is doing some silly moves or silly pranks, and he got 200,000 likes. So we get, become an obsession by likes. What is likes? Brothers and sisters, what is like? It's just a little character on a screen, a heart or a thumb or a turkey head. And we just want more of that. You post something silly on social media, Instagram or TikTok, and you maybe you had lunch, you come back after half an hour, you look at it, only four likes. Damn, I've got to, I, I, should be, I should behave even more like a monkey. So what's going on here? Yeah? And you know, Savannah, this is, this is the point I want to say later, but I want to add it to this point. That... You know these, the, the social media people who make the algorithm, yeah? Or the people that create the entertainment industry, or the people that are propping up these celebrities. Do you know how, whoever they are, whether they're Hollywood, Bollywood, wherever they are, you know why they're doing this? They're doing it because it's, like a, it's the master plan, brothers. They're, they're, they're making a fool out of us. 
They want us to dance like crazy. They want us to act like fools. They want us to waste our time. They're making the money, subhanAllah. Yeah? This entertainment, this music, this hip-hop, this celebrity. The, the reason why they throw at us, the reason because they want us to be obsessed with that. And, they're, and, and I can just imagine those people who are ahead of this, all these entertainment industries. Do you, do you understand what I mean by entertainment? I'm talking about Hollywood, Bollywood, series, Netflix, wherever they are. Wherever they are, they're sitting in some ivory tower right now. They're, they're rubbing their hands with the glee. And they say, you know, these Muslims, they're doing exactly how we want it to do. Nobody likes to be made a fool out of. If someone made a fool out of you, would you like that? Would you like someone to make a fool out of you? Yes or no? No, nobody wants to make a fool out of, right? Nobody wants to be duped. But that's exactly what's happening when you dance and you do haram and you follow all the stuff that the West is pushing to you. That's what's happening. Yeah? So, my point, going back to the main point, the heart. Brothers and sisters, the heart will never be satisfied. Trust me, listen to uh, get it from me. Get it from brothers who changed. You can have all the women, all the gal, all the money, all the cars, all the houses, all the yards, whatever. It's never going to be satisfied. The heart will always want more. SubhanAllah, what's the, you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whatever he says, is it in the heart? Yes or no? Can, can the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ever lie? Right? He can never lie. It's impossible. It is physically impossible, right? For the Prophet Sallallahu to lie. Right? What did he say? SubhanAllah. He said, if the, if the son of Adam... If the son of Adam, the human beings, us, if we were given a valley of gold, we will ask for a second one. They're so greedy. And then the hadith goes on to say, nothing fills his mouth but the dust of the grave, yet Allah will relent to whoever repents to him. And have you heard of Ibn Qayyim al Jawziya, the great scholar of Islam? Who's heard of Ibn Qayyim? Put your hands up. These are the people that we should learn. These are superheroes. Yeah? Messi and Ronaldo and um, what's that French players? Uh, Mbappe, yeah, that's it. And Mbappe and these players, they may have skills. And we probably know their height and age and we probably know their hand width and you know what they like and what they have for breakfast. But what, 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 what are they going to do for us? Yeah, you can watch the skill. I'm not, again, I'm not giving fatwa. I'm not giving fatwa, you know? Of course you watch the five. I, I, I watch football. I'm, gonna, I'm an Arsenal supporter, yes? One, two, three, four. Come on, brothers, don't be shy. We, we did all right last season. Anyway, alhamdulillah. Okay, okay. Settle down, settle down, inshallah. So, I watch football. I appreciate skills. But don't be obsessed with these people. There's an obsession. You know? Obsession. Back in the 80s, we used to have, in, the, in, the, in our bedrooms, we used to have wallpapers of football players. Back in the day. Do you remember those, those of my age? Paper, like big posters on our wall. Movie stars. You know, Tom Cruise. And all that. You know, Top Gun. And football. But now it's like on social media profile pictures. Yeah? So the thing is, what my point is this, that these guys that you're obsessing over, these celebrities, these movie stars, these football players, musicians, yeah, they don't even know you. They don't know you and they will do nothing for you. Yet these scholars, Ibn Qayyim, Al-Ghazali, Hassan al-Basri, Abin al-Jaw, I mean they're superstars. Study their lives, brothers. These are the role models. Study their lives. They are geniuses of the Ummah, mashallah. It's so tragic that we, don't, we probably know five names of scholars. I'm not even started with the Tabi'in. I've not even mentioned the Sahaba. Hey, SubhanAllah. So these are the people that can help you. So, um, so no matter how many Mochino tops, Gucci tops, Versace tops, caps, whatever, you can fill it, you will never be satisfied. The heart needs to be satisfied by the connection with Allah. We need to get to know Allah. What does that mean? What do what I mean by get to know Allah? Because this is one of the biggest tragedies of modern times. We're practicing Muslims or non-practicing Muslims, or non-Muslims, the biggest tragedy, I really feel strongly about this, is we, we, if I ask any of you like, do you believe in Allah? And you say, of course I do, bro. Yeah, of course I do. Of course I believe in Allah. What kind of silly question is that? But do we really know Allah? Have we really got to know Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala? And getting to know Allah does not mean like a 10 second Instagram reel. Subhan, that's insulting to Allah. Yeah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Rabb, yeah? So, when, we, when I say get to know Allah, this is something which you guys do. It's a, it's a kind of a homework, a kind of research, inshallah, for you all. What does, what does getting to know Allah mean? What does it mean? It means if you don't understand, like, for example, look, if a non-Muslim asks you, because we're a non-Muslim country, right? You go to, uh, how many of you go to school here? Put your hands up. School. Okay. College. College. College, okay. University, 
Yeah? And how many of you have got jobs in an office or whatever? You work with non-Muslims. How many of you have got jobs? Okay. So what's, what's my point here? My point is you're all, you can't avoid non-Muslims. They're everywhere. <laughs> yeah? You can't avoid non-Muslims. You can't, uh, no, just me, my house, my kitchen, my halal, me. No, you, you have to interact with non-Muslims. And at some point, brothers and sisters, you'll be asked a question. You'll be asked a question like, why are you Muslim? Do you believe in God? Prove it to me. They're demanding, non-Muslims right now, uh, uh, they're, they're asking for proofs. They're demanding our youth. They, and, and subhanAllah, why are youth getting confused? They don't know how to answer the question. They go, just isn't it, bro? I just believe in it, bro. That's not good. Yeah? So re- we need to understand that, mashallah, from our scholarship, from our knowledge based on Quran and Sunnah, basically on Islam, we can intellectually, academically, yeah, prove the existence of Allah. Not that he needs proving. Like it's, the onus is on atheists, those who don't believe in Allah. The onus, the burden is on them to prove otherwise. Because Allah is a divine reality. It's self-evident truth. But even then, we have evidences. We have the design argument. We have the moral argument. We have the chronic argument of God's existence. And we have the contingency. And we have many amazing, beautiful, sophisticated arguments. Right? Which the scholar says allowed to use that. Yeah? So this is what we need to do. If we knew that, just for example, just you can go to YouTube. You can do research. You can read a book or ask anybody. What are the cosmological constants in the universe? What are they? What's the, what's the impact, the cosmological constants? What's the significance of, of the planet Jupiter with the Earth? Right? The lunar tides of the moon. What is all this? These are indications, brothers and sisters. Indications that there's a beautiful, intricate design. There's a beautiful design. There's order in the universe. And where there's order, where there's design, there's a designer. And the designer is Allah. That's the kind of level of discussion we do. That's, when I say get to know Allah, you start with that. Then what do you go on to? You go on to understand His oneness. He's transcendent. He has the perfect in knowledge. He has the, he's the all-knowing, he's the all-loving, right? And many more. And, and I just want to quote to you from um, an ayah from the Quran. Um, I think it's Surah Al-Hashr. But some of you who fast can check it, inshallah. It's like a test. And Allah says, and you know, subhanAllah, the best way to describe Allah is when Allah describes himself. Yeah? And if this is English. I mean, how, how many of you are studying Arabic? Mashallah. I know Brother Irfan studying Arabic, mashallah. How many of you are studying Arabic? Okay. So... I'm sure when you read this in Arabic, your, inshallah, your heart and mind is going to be blown away, inshallah. Yeah? Allah says, He is Allah, other than whom there is no deity, knower of the unseen and the witnessed. He is the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. He is Allah, other than whom there is no deity, the sovereign, the pure, the perfection, the grantor of security, the overseer, the exalted in might, the compeller. The superior, exalted is Allah above whatever they associate with Him. He is Allah, the creator, the producer, the fashioner. To Him belong the best names. Whatever is in the heavens and the earth is exalting Him. And He is exalted in might, the wise. Brothers, this is just one of a few ayahs. Yeah? And when we, you know, let's make a little dua after Maghrib. Yeah? There's many duas we should make. One dua you should make, inshallah, like a life goal. When you're doing Maghrib Salah, when you're on Sajood, after you praise Allah, ask Allah to give you the uh, tawfiq and give you the uh, understanding that, and this is a dua I'm making, maybe you can take this dua from me, that oh Allah, when I get, I want to come to a time, Allah, maybe in a few months' time, six months, whatever, that whenever I, whenever I say your name, my heart shudders. Whenever I say your name, I'm about to be tearful. Because that's who is Allah. That's our Rabb. The Lord of everything that exists. That is Allah. That's a, is that not a beautiful life goal, brothers? That whenever you mention the word Allah in any sentence, that you like, whoa. Like I give da'wah sometimes. Yeah, alhamdulillah, a lot of times. May Allah accept it. Street da'wah everywhere, here, Pakistan, and in Europe. And when we speak to non-Muslims, we mention the word Allah. And subhanAllah, not, I mean, it certainly happened to me once, but one other brother, when he, he said he was talking about uh, with a Christian or an atheist about uh, Allah and he mentioned about Allah his existence and he said it so many times he said to the normals wait hold on because <laughs> you know it's, this, this is Allah you're Allah on your tongues you know you mentioned the word of Allah subhanAllah yeah so if we want to overcome our sins 
if we remove those bad habits, whatever they are. You know, we could talk about all the issues of the youth, right? Ranging from zina, ranging from, you know, uh, social media fitna, ranging from flirtation, from alcohol abuse to drugs, gangs, prison, lack of salah, lack of... You could, I mean, we can, we can do a PhD thesis on the issues of youth. And families, not just youth, right? And there are issues, yeah? It's all around us, in our family, amongst our cousins, in our neighborhoods, yeah? So the, how do we change that? What do we do to change that? One is get to know Allah. The other one is get to know, uh, to work on our heart. Now, let's say you, again, I'm not going to ask you, I was going to think, maybe I should ask this. Okay, I'm going to ask this question. I'm not going to, I'm not asked for details. The question is this. I might get killed, thrown out this masjid, but anyway. The question is this, brothers, and no, no, no joke thing, yeah? Serious. Do any of you brothers or sisters, I don't know how sisters going to answer, but anyway. Do any of you brothers know any brothers who are dealing in drugs? Just put your hands up. It's not like a well done thing. Oh, you know someone. Yeah. So Jazakallah will be honest, right? I'm sure a lot of you do. There's, there's a name, fla fla, fla fla, operating in that area. They exist. Unfortunately, they exist. Right? What you need to do is have, a, have some guts, make dua to Allah, and approach these people. Because I like a lot of these people who are involved in gangs, Muslims, who are drug dealers and gangs or gangsters or wannabes, whatever. I, I believe a lot of them have not been told what Islam is, they've not been told who Allah is. I, they, sincerely, they've been all their life. They've been like, you know, shut up, go and pray. Yeah, like that. Yeah, or they've been scolded, or they've been like being angered at, aggressive. They've been taught Islam aggressively. Yeah, a lot of used to, unfortunately, right? But they've not been given like dawa with hikmah. Yeah. So when you when you um, speak to them, say, look, bro, it's never too late to change. It's never too late to change. And can I just say this, whenever you see a Muslim youth, that even, you know, you may go down, what was the, what's the local high street there, is it? East Ham North, sorry? Parking Road, and then you've got East Ham, then Green Street, right? So when you're walking down the road with your family shopping, you might come across a bunch of youths, either by themselves or in a gang. And, you know, we, we can't help it, we're judgmental, you know, these guys are messed up. The way they dress, the way they walk. Right? So rather than judge him, think like this. Think, you know, this youngster, this Muslim, he's first of all, he's my brother, sister, brother. Or if sisters who are not, you know, covered properly and or whatever, not wearing modesty, modest clothing, do, before judge them, say, look, you know, this, this brother or sister, they, they're my brother and sister. They're my, they're my own, they're my brother and sister. And, and the second phase of thinking is, they've, not, they've never been proper nasiha. They've never been proper dawah. So if you can find the guts and the energy and the enthusiasm to go up and say, Salaam alaikum, bro, can I just keep, I know I'm just a random stranger, right, sister, can I just talk to you, sister? The, the, I'm talking about the sisters, type of sisters. I just want to give you advice that, you know, it's never too late to change, you know, whatever sin you are, no matter how deep you are, because look, a lot of youth, they want to change, right? They want to change, but they don't know how to. So what are the steps to, to Toba? It's make sincere Toba. Do it from the depths of your heart. Oh Allah, I don't want to smoke cigarettes. Oh Allah, I do not want to smoke dr drugs, whatever form. Oh Allah, I do not want to have a haram relationship. Oh Allah, I do not want to commit zina. Oh Allah, I don't want to watch filth and rubbish online at night when I'm alone. I don't want to do that. Oh Allah, I, I'm leaving this. So steps to sins is make sincere toba. It, you have to have regret. We, you know, we've all sinned, brothers and sisters. Yeah? We've all sinned. We've been there. You know? While I'm talking, you're probably thinking that sin right now. Yeah? But Allah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says uh, in the Quran that, you know, in Surah Zumar, that, oh, my servants, oh, my servants, do not despair of the, you know, oh, my servants who have transgressed against their souls, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. As we said earlier as well, Allah is the merciful, the especially merciful. Yeah? So, step to Tawbah, this is my last point because I'm, I'm looking at time, inshallah, yeah? Step to Tawbah, step to, to overcome sins. Extreme regret. Yeah? yeah, if you have to cry, cry. Obviously, do it privately, but regret it. Oh my! You know when you, you know, we all like, you know, subhanallah. It's a silly analogy, you know, but who plays football? You guys play football? Yeah. Okay, mashallah. And you know when you're you're about to score a goal, there's a sitter. You know what a sitter is, right? A sitter. Sitter. Yes. No. Like you literally, there's the goal there, and you're there. There's no keeper, and you still missed over the bar, right? I, I can think of Canute for some reason back in the days. But anyway, yeah. So you miss, so once you once you miss that open goal, what do you feel? What's the feeling? Yeah. Oh, I 
man, you're pathetic. Oh, you know, regret, deep regret. Yeah. So the thing is, that's the kind of feeling you need to get. So if you if you overcome that sin, sin, have sincere, deep regret. What are you saying, brothers? Darling, what, do you agree with what I'm saying? Yeah. Any sin, have deep regret. The second one, you leave that sin immediately. Whatever it is, whatever that sin is, right? If you got a girlfriend that no one knows about, your family, your parents, or online girlfriend, dump her immediately, right now. Block. No thanks. I don't want to know you. Lock her off. Don't. I better explain to her, or I better explain to him that you know what, bro. It was good, but it lasted. But no, no. F- goodbye. Block. I can't know you. Fear Allah. Jazakallah. Bon. Bye bye. Now, right now, don't procrastinate because shaitan say, nah, bro, just maybe just give a dawa, in it, Or give him dawa. No, no, no. If it's haram relationship, kill it. Destroy it. Immediately. Yeah? And the third aspect of tawbah is never resolve that I would die. I would rather die than go back to that sin. I would die than pick up another alcohol or beer or whatever. I would rather die and be destroyed than have a next, you know, zoo or spliff or whatever. Or we have that have that intention, and of course ask Allah, please make you firm on this. Yeah, um, we've got what a few minutes, inshallah. Right, I want to finish on this point. I did say this, but I want to add one last point, inshallah. Yeah. Um. So, brothers and sisters, you know, inshallah, like I said earlier, I, I look at you guys. You're in the masjid, which is a blessing. You've heard me talk. Hopefully, I've not put you to sleep. Uh, if you had a nice sleep, then tell me about your dream later. Um, the thing is, we like I, I mentioned earlier, but I want to I want to really uh, dwell on this point that even if you're a practicing Muslim, even if, so, if someone who prays five times a day, and you the Quran with beautiful tajweed, brothers, give me just a few moments, shall I'm nearly done, yeah, boys, lads, just give me a few moments, shall I, yeah, okay. Even if you're a practicing Muslim, you got a beard, you're a hijab, you're wearing niqab. You're reciting, reciting the Quran, you're fasting, you're not doing any sins, you're not going to club, nothing. You know what happens? We will still sin because that's what human beings do, right? We will sin. Now the thing is, right now we may be very strong, mashallah, and hope, uh, may Allah keep you strong. But you know what? Shaitan is working hard out there. Society is working hard out there. The non muslim the kuffar are working hard. They've got an agenda, right? They've got an agenda. Now, you don't know when you're going to slip. You don't know when you're going to sin. I've seen, you might have seen it as well. You might have seen the, the best of brothers with the biggest of beards, the biggest of phobes, right? And the biggest of ibadah and recitation. They've, they've committed zina. They've drank alcohol. They've gone to a party. They've slipped up. It happens. It happens. This is, this is the reality of this age. But, may Allah, but just in case you, any of you guys get tempted by sin, you will get tempted throughout your life, especially you, if you're going to be tested. The moment that sin comes, that temptation comes in, whatever form, a girl, an invitation to a party, uh, just have a little bottle, a sip, it's not going to do for you. Your, will your God, will you destroy you for one little sip of beer? You know, that's what they say, right? Whatever form the sin comes to you, think about this, yeah? And this is one thought experiment I want to do with you, inshallah, yeah? And this helped me and it's going to help you. Um, all of you might have young brothers and sisters. Yeah? Younger brothers and sisters, yeah? Two-year-old, three-year-old. A lot of these younger, your, your actual siblings, your brothers and sisters, they look up to you, you know that? No matter how much you don't like it or like it, they look up to you. You're their role model. Yeah? They look up to you. Imagine you're found out with a girl, like from a hotel room, whatever. Yeah, I'm not going to too much graphic, yeah? Imagine your young brother or sister, your two year old, your cute brother or sister, finds out somehow you've done something nasty with a girl. What's he going to think? His world is over, man. That young sister, she's, she's found out my brother or my older sister who I looked up to has just done something filthy with another human being before marriage. That's your brother's sister. What about your mother? Can you, if, can you just think about this, right? Imagine if your mother found out you've committed a haram, a sin. Imagine that. What's she going to go through? She thought you were a good guy. Yeah? What about your dad? Your hardworking dad, brother's voice. Yeah? Do you understand the point I'm making? Any sin that comes to you before you said, "Yeah, what's, I, I don't mind going on a date," or I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna link her up, or I'm gonna just, just taste a bit of alcohol, I'm gonna go to that party or nightclub or, or concert. I'm just gonna sit spend a few minutes. No, brother, sister, it's haram. It's not allowed, right? If you're tempted, think about your young brother, sister. Think about your mom. Think about your dad. 
what, what will, their, their world is over, man. This is supposed to be my son. Now, they, now, these are just human beings, right? If that doesn't move you, think about your Rabb. Think about Allah. That Allah knows what you're doing. He's watching us. He's the ever watchful. Yeah? So the moment you think about sin or have a tiny bit of minute sins, just think about the, the, the exposure, the guilt. It's going to kill you. It's going to consume you. Yeah? So I'm going to wrap up, inshallah, with a, a, a more positive point, inshallah, which is that we've all got... We all, do we all want to get to Jannah? Yes or no? Yeah? And I don't know about you, and this is another homework. I gave another homework, which you all forgot, right? But this is my last homework for you guys, yeah? We love homework, yes? No, okay. But this is a good homework. This is a good one, right? Have you heard of a bucket list? Yeah? Bucket list is like, you know, I want to travel so many countries around the world by the age of 30, 40, 50, whatever, yeah? So have a list, maybe in your phone, or post a little... Uh, poster, paper on your wallpaper, whatever, yeah? Have a list of targets. And in that, come up with the first 10 things you're going to do when you get to Jannah, yeah? So I'll give you my example, for example. I, you know, one of the things I want in Jannah is I want, you know, 950,000 pounds in about one, one account uh, in Barclays, and I want about 900,000 pounds in Nationwide, I want about 800,000 pounds in uh, HSBC, and then, you know, seven, eight, seven other accounts. I want that, yeah? I want to... I want to become a king of a planet. I don't know what name I'll give it. I don't know, maybe you, got, you can give me some inspiration, yeah? I want to fly a light better than Superman. Yeah, although he's a, he's a small hero, yeah? So what's my point? The point is, brothers and sisters, have that bucket, because if you don't have that bucket list, yeah, you will not work hard for Jannah. Yeah? You may not get it here. May Allah bless you with, with you know, uh, halal rizq. May Allah bless you with a lot of dunya. But you may not get it here, but you will, inshallah, whatever fantasy, whatever wish you have. Well, you know, and think of a wish. Make a list tonight of all the things you want to do. All the things that you can't do right now, but you want to do. Have it and work hard for it. And, and that will help you to do ibadah, worship Allah with sincerity, and get to Jannah. Jazakallah for listening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah khairan for your very inspirational talk. We have a few minutes for questions, inshallah. If anyone wants to ask. Yeah, before uh, you put your hands up, brothers and sisters, I don't know how the sister's going to ask, but remember, there's no such thing as a weird, stupid question. Yeah, when I was younger, I had questions. So no matter how weird, strange, crazy, you know, dark your question is, this is a good opportunity to ask. Of course, if it's too dark, you know, PG-18 question, right, then we can go on the side afterwards. I can stay for five minutes, you know, privately, one-to-one, -one, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Happy to die. Thanks. You go to LSBU? Mm -hmm. MashaAllah. Uh, so, no, it's a very interesting question. The, the brother's asking that, you know, um, social media is something we can't escape. It's, yeah, you have to use it, yeah? So, um, I'm specific, first of all, you know, no scholar has made it haram yet. <laughs> yeah? There's no fatwa anywhere in any schools of thought, right? But the thing is, um, the kind of social media I'm talking about, there, there's some apps, social media communication apps, which are real, like, fitna brothers. So I would, if somebody was to ask my personal uh, opinion, for a youngster, I would never advise you to be on TikTok. Absolutely no way. I'm not saying haram, but I would strongly advise against it. Because the fitna is too much. Even Snapchat. Yeah? Instagram, maybe. But that's a gray area. Facebook is clean, sort of. But even, there's fitna everywhere. So the thing is, you need to limit your time. Number one, limit your time on social media. Don't be addicted to it. Don't be obsessed with it. There is life beyond social media. Do you know what? <laughs> it still exists. The parks, the, you know, the outdoors, the mount, they're still there. You don't go anywhere. You know, one thing I've noticed about youngsters, have you seen it? Where's my phone? Sorry. You know, you know when they're, they're, always, they're always like this. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Salaam. Uh, Dinner's ready, okay. Asalaamu Alaikum, you coming down? Yeah, I'm coming down. They're always looking down like this. The phone is there, yeah? Brothers, young brothers, let's look up now and again. There's a beautiful sky, yeah? 
Literally, we're looking down. The, the phone makes you look down. Let's start looking up and around us, yeah? So number one, uh, limit your time. Number two, and this could be really tricky, and I know it's very awkward, but share what you're watching, share what you're doing, posting with your family members. Because the family really helps you to keep on track, yeah? Like uh, Instagram, my wife has the password, she can check it, who's messaging me, for example, yeah? Share it, especially if you're young. And if you're a parent, have an agreement with your son or daughter early, as much as you can, because the, the more they grow up, the more free and the more they're gonna find ways to hide it. But as much as you can, parents, t tell your kid, your son or daughter, whichever age, 13, 14, listen, Let's have an agreement. Uh, do you mind if I just check your phone now and again? That's it. Because then you, the youngster will keep away from that fitna. Because you know what? Although he should be fearing Allah, but he knows my dad's going to check it once a week. And oh, that girl, I better unfollow her before he finds out. You know, whatever. Yeah? So share your content. Number, number three, if you're going to be on social media, why don't you purify it by calling to Allah? Call it to Allah. Share like the Dawah videos. Share the Dawah reels. Share the Dawah conversations. Share, there's so many speakers now. Who, uh, powerful reminders. Share that. If you're going to be social media, inshallah. Yeah? Purify. In fact, there's a point I made earlier. You know, when you, I do a lot of, uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah? So what we need to do, the reason I listen to podcasts and Quran recitations is because the ear, needs, the ear needs to be filled with khair and positivity. Right? And, and when we're watching, our eyes need to see good things as well, inshallah. So these are a few points. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I said last, last thing is, again, we should make dua to Allah for every little thing. We, there's, a, there's a fallacy, there's a, there's a misconception that we only make dua for the big things. Oh Allah, grant me an amazing spouse. Oh Allah, grant me an amazing job. Oh Allah, grant me umrah. You know what big things? Think, what about the little things? Yeah? Oh Allah, help, I'm going to be on social media. You know, we can be frank with Allah. We can be informal with Allah, right? Oh Allah, I'm going to be social media. I'm going to use it for my college or whatever. I'm going to add friends. Oh Allah, please protect me from the evil fitna. Please, Allah, protect me from the dark stuff, of, uh, the dark side of social media. Make that dua. Allah is Allah Kulli Shayin Kadir. He is capable of anything. Yeah? Yes, bro. Nice and loudly, yeah? Okay, so now we're good. Like, he holds your neck and saying, drink this. Like that. Really? Oh, that's oppression now. That's zulum. I said report to the police, bro. Straight up. Because nobody's out of touch. That's the, you know, that's the good thing about the legal system. You have rights, yeah? So some Muslim, crazy Muslim, says, drink this, or smoke this, or whatever, yeah? Say, I'm calling 999, oh, 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 oh. left it, left it, man, left it. But look, uh, look one, of the, one of the things to, um, there's many ways of trying to avoid that, but I would say that guy, or that company, if you can avoid it, avoid that company, first of all, yeah? Find righteous company. Secondly, if you can't avoid it, give them down. So, are you not Muslim, bro? Do you not fear Allah? Let's talk about death. And you know the good, you know the good thing about death, brothers. Yeah, this is a little a point for you. If you are in some sort of company which is committing haram and you're the only good guy, and and they get you get temptations, talk about death all the time. You know what will happen? Either they'll get inspired and change, or they'll leave you alone. Ah, oh, leave man. That guy's boring. He's always about death. Then forget about you know tempted you. They won't enforce you nothing. Yeah. So remind them about death all the time. Be that. Be that guy of death, inshallah.